Deal with me as thou seest me. Thy work begin, thy work complete. But take me as I am. Please ask the Lord that there is no explanation. Our only plea is what Christ did at Calvary. Thank you, Father, this night. We ask you to please take us further. We want you to take us just as we are. We are presenting ourselves to you tonight. Do your work in our lives. Lord, all those who cry to you to become vessels and bearer of that fresh water of life, that will bring back wine unto this feast that is about dying out. Please take us just as we are tonight. Do for us, O oh God, what we cannot do for ourselves. And in this hour, please come among us. Do your deep work in our lives and cause your glory to break forth upon us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to only look at the cross. In dealing with the old creation. In order to create space for the new creation man. Hallelujah. I'd like you to please pay some very quick attention tonight because we are asking God to do for us such things that we have not been able over time to do for ourselves. Galatians chapter 6. Are you in Galatians 6? Now please go quickly to verse 14. Verse 14. There are few things that we must put together tonight in order to set us at a space where we can look unto God together. Galatians 6, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world has been crucified to me 
and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. We came to the point in the morning when we saw that whatever is not new creation does not count with God. And whatever thing is done for the flesh, by the flesh, in the flesh, it does not count as far as God is concerned. He said, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts, but the new creation. Now, having come to that conclusion, the big challenge that we are confronted with, what must God do to evacuate the rubbish that we have carried all the years? And I'd like to use an illustration quickly tonight from the scriptures as we begin to highlight what the cross uh, came to do for us. But that verse says, Far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I also to the world. What is the instrumentality of the cross? I would like to quickly say that when we talk about the cross, it was first and foremost a phenomenon in the Old Testament and the children of Israel, they knew what it is all about. You will notice that before they were going to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> they were not devising a new method of punishment. It had been there <coughs> and it meant something. And what the word of God says about the cross that I would like you to quickly note as we build very quickly tonight is that the Bible says it is written quickly return back to Galatians chapter 3 and see what was written in the word of God. We will read verse 13 Say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us for it is written <coughs> cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree so the cross as at the point is that instrument that was used to do away with whatever they have regarded as a menace in the community. When Galatians 3.13 
alluded to the fact that it is written, Cursed be he that hangeth on a tree. It was referring to a passage in Deuteronomy. And let's quickly read that as we get an understanding and then we go. In the Deuteronomy passage that Galatians 3 verse 13 was referring to, Deuteronomy 21, we would like to go through to verse 18 very quickly. Are you there? If a man has a stubborn son, a stubborn and rebellious son, who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and who when they have chastened him will not heed them, then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of his city, to the gate of his city. And they shall say to the elders of his city, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He's a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. If a man has committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defy the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is accursed of God. The very, very serious question that we are longing to ask God to deal with for us tonight. What is the cross in releasing our lives from the rubbish in order for us to be available to bear another life, the new creation. Before anybody was qualified to be crucified, are you hearing me? It meant then that the condition that we have read in Deuteronomy chapter 21 has been applicable to that life. What it means is that the entire personality of that song has been concluded to be what? To be the evil. You are not getting me. He said, if a man shall have a son that is what? That is rebellious and stubborn. They have chastened him, he cannot change. They have corrected him, he cannot improve. They have instructed him, he will not listen. And they have come to the end of their effort. The Bible said, the father and the mother, they will do what? 
they will lay hold on that their son and they will drag him out to the gate of the city to the elders now let me if, let, let me ask you a question before they come to that conclusion of grabbing their son and taking him to the gates to hand him over to the elder and say this is our son is rebellious he's stubborn no matter what we did he cannot change let me ask you what conclusion had they reached even before they left home with that boy eh I need to hear you very well they have con concluded that he is irredeemable they have concluded that it was better he died they prefer not to have a son than to have him am I correct even though he had not yet died what have they concluded about him they have concluded that he is as good as what as dead please be attentive because we have a short time tonight and yet we must catch this in order for us to step into that fresh release of life that God is longing to bring us through when Paul said God forbid that I should boast in anything apart from the cross and if we understand what exactly was the cross how did it happen that it was the cross that was chosen as the instrumentality of dealing with our old nature and how did Jesus the beloved son of his father who even a week to the cross on the mount of transfiguration Moses and Elijah came to reason with him about his death and the father testified and said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased listen how could he be so handed over to the elders of the city do you remember that when Pilate was interrogating Jesus and he said do you not know that I have power to deliver you or to release you do you remember Jesus said something that was very significant he said you will not have had any power over me it's because my father has done what has handed me over to you so how did Jesus the one who knew no sin how did he fit into the rebellious stubborn son that his father could hand him over to the elders at the gate 
how did he become qualified for that kind of treatment? Are you hearing me? Now, for anybody to be qualified for that kind of death, what it means is that he has been regarded altogether as a menace. Not only that he does bad things, he himself is called the evil. Did you read it in that scripture? He says, so shall you put the evil away from you. The cross is only a punishment for the irredeemable. Are you with me? The cross is only used for the one that is regarded a menace. The one that cannot be improved upon. The one that was only good for death. Are you with me? Listen. Listen. And this is important for God to be able to help us tonight. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will not allow this moment to pass without a divine help Amen. for each one of our own lives. Since God has turned his eyes that he wants to work with you. Now, the word of God already noted that anyone that is hanged upon a tree is what? Is accursed. So for Jesus to be allowed to be upon the tree, you will want to ask what offense did he commit? Listen. Do you know that even when they were to crucify him, there is a tradition, there was a tradition that the people have a choice. If there are two criminals, a criminal could be released while the other one would be condemned. And there was this notorious arm robber, Basabas, who was also condemned to death. But when Pilate said, I have an option to release one out of two. Should I release unto you Jesus or should I release Basabas? Do you know what the people said? Release Basabas unto us. Away with Jesus. Crucify him. We don't want him.
What was his offense? What was his offense that an amber robber was preferred to him? What was it? And the second thing I want you to hear. Do you remember that there was a young prophet in the book of First Kings, I think chapter 13, that was sent to go and prophesy against the altar at Bethel. That young prophet that God said, don't eat. If anybody greets you, don't answer. Don't sleep there. Do you remember? Do you remember that as that prophet came and as he was speaking, he was prophesying, the king was annoyed that why is he speaking against him? And the man lifted up his hand and wanted to slap him. What did the Bible say happened to that man? What happened to that man? The hand couldn't come down again. This is how the king's hand was hanging. Couldn't bring it down again. Until the man of God, the young prophet, prayed and said, God, please have mercy on this man before his hand could come down. But Jesus, they slapped him and their hand did not hang. They spat on his face. And their mouth did not turn around. Why did God hand him out? I don't know whether you remember that Jesus. In that crucial moment. He cried, he said, my father, my father, why? Have you done what? Forsaken. Have you forsaken me for one time? What was he that God was dealing with that he could not spare his only begotten son? What was it that God want to get rid of? That if it was located in his beloved son, he doesn't want to see him. What was it? What was it? I want you to get this. The Bible said he was pushed from judgment to prison. He was mocked we cry mockings. He was pierced with broken bottles and bones, and heaven was silent. They looked away.
what was the cross? What was the cross to deal with? You remember that when Nicodemus was asking, how can these things be? How can a man that have been old, how can he be born again? Do you remember he asked that question? When Jesus began to answer him, Jesus began to say, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, the question that we're asking is this. How can how can the Son of the living God who knew no sin how could he be likened to the serpent. How could he be be be, be likened to the serpent? We know that serpent has nothing to do with good but evil. What is God's agenda for handing him over to the men of the city? To be crucified, to be mocked. What was God planning to achieve with the cross? This is important, and I want you to carefully, carefully follow. As we read the word of God. Carefully. And I really desire that tonight. Jesus. And his experience on the cross. Will not be in vain. For any of our lives. Listen. Several prophets have preached. Even a man like Elijah. When he came to die. Jezebel said, may, God, may the gods do so to me if I do not take off your head from your neck today. And Elijah said, now, O oh Lord, it's enough. Take my life. Not Jezebel. And God heard. A chariot of fire took him What offense did Jesus commit that his father did not send legions of angels to take him up? Do you remember that when they arrested him and they were beating him here and they were slapping him here Peter was moved 
and felt that how could he be treating his master like that? He caught somebody's ear. Do you remember? And Jesus said to him, Do you think if I had wanted, I could not have asked my father to send me legions of angels? The cup that my father gives me, don't you want me to drink it? So what it is, what is it that led Jesus to the cross? What was it? What was his offense that took him to the cross? Why was heaven silent? Why did God came in defense of Moses? You remember that some people spoke against Moses. And Moses said, if I'm a man of God, let the ground open up and swallow these people alive. Did it happen? Did it happen? It happened. Some other people spoke against him. Fire came from the presence of God and roasted them alive. God was defending Moses. Even this Moses that misbehaved, heaven still defended him. And when it was time for him to die, God would not allow any useless death to affect Moses. Do you know what God did? He took him to the mount. And from there, he took him away. In the book of Jude, we are told that when God commanded angels to bring the body of Moses upstairs, some demons, some principalities stood and they were contending. And they said, the Lord rebukes you. Now, I'm asking, what offense did Jesus commit that even what Moses was entitled to it was not given. What was the cross all about? What was it all about? We will find very quick few verses that we like to read and I will draw some few issues so that tonight tonight we might come to a place a place of prayer please look at Isaiah 53 which is a very critical passage but I would like you to read it along with me quickly are you there? are you there? He shall grow up before him, we're reading verse 2, as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. 
He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4. Surely Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yes, yet we esteemed him stricken, <coughs> smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded. For what? For what? Our transgressions. Please be careful as you read. He was wounded for our transgressions. Does your own verse have transgressions? Eh? Eh? Your own is reading rebellion, right? What did the knife say? Eh? Transgressions. I want you to note the S. I want you to check the plurality. He was wounded for what? Our transgressions. Now, excuse me. When they pluralize transgressions, they are talking about the various sins, the various offenses that we have committed. But you know in the morning, we came to note that it is not just the sins, the bad things, the wrong things that we did that is the issue. What was the issue in the morning for us? It's you, you, you. Now, if it was just that we had transgressed that we have committed sins we have done wrong things if that is all about it his wounds will have been enough he could have been wounded without necessarily going to the cross are you with me? When they wounded him, blood was gushing, gushing out. And if it was only for transgressions, I supposed that when Pilate, you remember that day, Pilate took the Lord. After he told them, say, I have not found anything wrong with this man. They said, well, whether you find anything wrong with him or not, away with him. We don't want him. And he said, okay, I will beat him. I will give him uh, 39 stripes. You know, when he was giving him 39 stripes, are you hearing me? He thought that would make him to avoid the cross. The 39 stripes, even though he did nothing to warrant 39 stripes. And when we talk of 39 stripes, we are not talking about just beating with ordinary rod. 
If you see the kind of cordial that was made with skin, but in between broken bottles, very sharp objects, and these two hefty soldiers stripped him naked. And they held the cordial and when they beat him, he coiled around his body and they pulled it. His body was broken. And blood gushed out. And another one was standing to count. And they continued until his visage was mad. But Pilate was doing that because he thought it would be sufficient. He thought that the 39 tribes was going to replace crucifixion. But when he completed the 39 stripes, the people said, Away with him. Crucify him. Give us Basabas. This is a menace. More terrible than an armed robber. We don't want him. So what was it that the 39 strikes was not sufficient to handle? What was it that the 39 strikes was insufficient to deal with in our deliverance? Listen, brothers and sisters. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Did you see iniquities? Eh? Was he also plural? Is he plural? He was bruised for our iniquities. So, excuse me, if it was just the question of transgressions and iniquities, the bruise, the bruises should have been enough. The wounds should have been enough. But listen, look at the word of God. The Bible said, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. But now I'm going to verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him what? Did you notice that this one is not plural? Did you notice that verse 6 was not talking of iniquities? Did you notice that this one was not talking of transgressions? Did you notice now that there is something else that 39 stripes will not deal with? There is something else that bruises is not sufficient to handle. You 
There is something else that only death can terminate. Is that because we have gone astray and each one of us have turned in his own way, the Lord has done what? Has laid on him the what? The iniquity of us all. The inic you see, I don't know how to put that very quickly. That, you see, when, when we got this man up in the morning, and we saw that everything here is not good. That what was wrong that needed to be changed is not his character. It's not even the bad, bad things he's doing. It's who he is. And God is saying, I don't want this, no matter how you decorate it. What did God do to Jesus that wounds and bruises did not satisfy him? Verse 6 says, God did something. What did he do? He laid upon him. What? The iniquity, the iniquity of us. You, I don't know. How to, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing I could explain it easily. That the what, 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 what is wrong with this man? Is 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 the Mister Iniquity? The iniquity of this man. Is what produces all the iniquities. Do you understand what I'm saying? The man that is here is what produced all the transgressions. Even if we cleanse him of all transgressions and remove all iniquities, as long as the Mr. Iniquity that is in him is still here. What is going to happen? It will produce again. Now listen, you are not with me yet. You see, what came out when he was wounded? Excuse me, what came out of Jesus when he was wounded? His blood. Listen, what the blood can handle can only be transgressions and iniquities he cannot handle the mister iniquity you are not with me again you see many times yes you will say oh lord oh lord oh I've done it again the blood of Jesus cleanses from all unrighteousness. But the blood of Jesus cannot stop Mr. Iniquity from producing again. This is why, yes, every time you plead the blood of Jesus, you plead the blood for cleansing of the transgressions of the lying, of the misbehaviors that has been produced by who? Mr. By the Mr. Iniquity that is here. I want you to catch this properly tonight. You see, Paul said, 
God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus by which I was crucified to the world. 